When I was nearing the end of Persona 5, apart from leaving characters that had stolen my heart, I felt sad that I'd never experience its dungeons for the first time again. With treasure, platforming, puzzles, and stealth, Persona 5's dungeons amplify the story unfolding while mixing in the exploration experience from past Persona games in an interesting way and left me more often than not in a mild state of awe at the end of each one. Persona 5's dungeons are a great example of how impactful story dungeons can be, and this is a list of the things I missed experiencing for the first time after finishing my Persona 5 journey. Platforming in JRPGs is something I generally didn't get too excited for until recently. Jump mechanics are fun and all, but sometimes they're just there, and don't really add much more than making a world feel more three-dimensional. Before playing Persona 5, I wasn't excited for platforming, as cool as it looked in trailers. But since playing it, I love how it adds to the puzzling feel of dungeons. Platforming in Persona 5 is usually added to serve a purpose, whether it be to create an unlockable path over a big hole or create a climbable route for treasure that makes exploration feel varied and is like what you'd expect from a true phantom thief. Platforming is something I never would have thought Persona needed, but it works so well with the Phantom Thief's stylish and sneaky way of stealing hearts that I think Persona 5 would lose something without it. Jumping around dungeons isn't only useful for finding treasure, it can be extremely useful for sneaking up on shadows. Sneaking up on shadows isn't new to Persona, but it feels much better in 5. With the addition of platforming on top of sneaking around corners and out of holes, it's very easy to enjoy and frequently use the cool looking but simple to execute stealth mechanics. There's also a small level of importance placed on sneaking up on shadows, as running on headfirst increases the security level of the dungeon, so being stealthy is rewarded by having a much smoother dungeon crawling experience. Also, again, since Persona 5 is so stylish, it's hard to deny how cool the protagonist looks darting around corners to jump on shadows and literally tear their faces off. Since the challenge of taking a different path every time you're in a dungeon is gone in the new set dungeon layouts, Persona 5 adds the challenge of puzzles to keep things interesting. I'm not a big player of puzzle games, but I enjoy them in JRPGs, and Persona 5 added enough types to make each dungeon feel very different. One dungeon in particular used a combination of picture puzzles and code puzzles among others that kept me constantly on my toes wondering how the dungeon would challenge me next. It's probably the most fulfilling dungeon I've ever played, mostly thanks to those puzzles. The dungeons themselves are also very much like puzzles a lot of the time, thanks to the combination of jumping, climbing, and interacting with the metaverse and the real world to unlock different parts. Persona 5 is not the typical climb and fight till you reach the top dungeon crawler scene in other Persona games, and the more complex puzzle and interactive dungeons feel fresh and satisfying in every single one. It's the little things that count, and being able to save and continue through dungeons more easily is a much needed addition found in Persona 5. In Persona 4 Golden, you had to use an item to get back to the entrance and save your progress, but that system is thankfully no more in Persona 5, with safe rooms meaning you can save on most dungeon floors. Even though I still think Persona 5 could add more ways to save in dungeons and cutscenes, these rooms are a vast improvement to the system found in Persona 4, and they actually have a few more uses than just saving, such as talking to characters to find out dungeon progress and using efficient healing items. Safe rooms also allow an easy way to get to different dungeon floors, a function that I used many times where a dungeon task needed me to dart to the other side of the dungeon to continue on. And if being told how far I was in a dungeon wasn't useful enough, I really liked the addition of completion screens when you leave a dungeon. They don't serve much more purpose other than showing what you did, but after spending an hour or so running around and completing puzzles and ripping Shadow's faces off, seeing a progress report is a very satisfying way to round up the dungeon experience. These two minor features both raise the quality of the dungeons, and together help make Persona 5's new dungeons the best in the series yet. Thank you for watching my video, let me know in the comments below what your favorite part was of Persona 5's dungeons and if you're still playing Persona 5. You 
even like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring the bell for notifications on whenever I post. Check out the blog at jrpgjungle.blogspot.com. I do everything I do here, but in written form with some extra stuff too. And you can find me on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle, talking about what I'm playing and how much God Wars is kicking my ass. Until next time, thank you, bye!